About a year and a half ago, uh, we were investigating uh, what programs would be uh, dealing with neuroplasticity. And so we went about uh, evaluating programs to see what we could institute in the school. And it was part of the, the Brem Institute for Research. And we visited with uh, Barber uh, in Toronto. And uh, we were talking to her about uh, wanting to implement Aerosmith as a school because it was much more inclusive of looking at neuroplasticity in, the, in the multiple areas of the brain versus uh, programs which just focused on working memory um, or, or programs like that. So uh, we immediately uh, saw the value to it. And uh, we were talking to Barbara about the fact that we were getting ready to launch into doing MRIs to look at the effectiveness as to what we were doing at Brem. And uh, that launched into a conversation about uh, she was also wanting to do uh, evaluations as to uh, the effectiveness of, of Aerosmith to give the scientific information to it. So we entered into an agreement on that, and she was uh, very gracious in, in, uh, in having us work with her in conjunction with that. So we started our MRI studies last year, and we're in our second year of doing these studies now uh, in conjunction with uh, Southern Illinois University and Brem. We were planning on doing our brain scans, uh, and then when we met with Barbara, uh, she was also interested in being able to put science uh, to the program and be able to look at some of the the outcomes of that and we believed in the neuroplasticity of the brain and it just seemed logical for us to team up and she facilitated that along with uh, and then Howard also facilitated and set the program up here in Vancouver uh, and we're also looking at doing the analytics through the database that we've have, we've have, uh, developed to look at best practices for kids and, and what is the best possible means of looking holistically at kids how do we how do we measure that how do we measure the social emotional as well as cognitive growth and academic growth, and how do you provide systems in order for our kids to uh, catch up where they left off, uh, where they oftentimes our kids have not had the opportunity to fully engage in, in life or fully engage in academic environments, and this gives them an opportunity to engage in life. Brim School is a boarding school uh, for students with uh, complex learning disabilities, and we have students who have uh, specific learning disabilities, dyslexia, dyscalculia, um, kids who have language-based issues, so they have issues with processing. Uh, we also have kids who have ADD, uh, kids who may be on the spectrum. And all of these kids, the commonality is, is that they struggle in their learning. And we try to holistically look at our students so that we're providing for the academic, social, and emotional needs of the kids. And we integrate Aerosmith into the program and that we believe in neuroplasticity and that that is a way for us to have a greater impact with the kids and give them the foundation for future learning. And uh, we, look, we want the data and we welcome the data uh, because that gives us an opportunity to go forward and to push the limits as far as um, being able to help our kids integrate. Uh, our outcome studies, we're looking to hopefully push the agenda of what do we need to be doing within the schools to facilitate our kids being able to learn, uh, being able to socialize, being able to be part of society in a full way, not just a, a tangential way. Uh, so we're hoping really to push the envelope and put science in the classroom. You know, Aerosmith, we want to put the science to Aerosmith. I think Barbara's done a remarkable job in putting it together, and now we need to put the data behind it so that it's more acceptable. Uh, to be mainstreamed and, and, and you know all science need to be mainstreamed in the classrooms instead of being becoming more and more myopic. Um, I, I do scientific conferences every every two years which are just scientists going into uh, conferences for a solid week and it's isolated and you just do it in there but when you look at oftentimes the brain science is about becoming more myopic versus being generalized and so for instance the the we're using resting state um, MRIs for our kids and the resting state is looking at the brain as it is functional as it is not doing an activity but as it is and that gives us a marker then to measure when we start doing interventions with the kids what changes do we see over time and I, I think that we're going to see significant changes and the issue then becomes when we're doing the analytics of it is try to differentiate out what works where and when 
and eventually, because of predictive qualities we have in our, our database system, hopefully we're going to be able to say, this is a profile of the kid. Here's the most efficient way to approach this kid's needs, and here's what we need to do, and take away the guesswork. So ultimately what we want to do is have the predictive formula so that we can provide the best possible service at the earliest time for the kids so they don't have to go through the pain and grief that they have, that they live through. The outcomes that we're seeing with the kids and involving the kids in the process has been phenomenal. Uh, so each kid that comes in for us, you know, we give them a, uh, a picture of their brain, my brain, I frame it. I have two pictures. One I frame and I'll, I'll, I'll sign for them and then they sign one for me and then I, I take their signed picture and it's, the, and it's the, the wall of pioneers and every kid's head is out, image is out in the, outside my office. So. so it's becoming part of the culture and I think that's part of what we need to do is to demystify it, make it part of the culture. Um, because ultimately it's the kids who are going to dictate for themselves and I think that's, again, that goes back to the empowerment.